Welcome back to Speed Sport Magazine. I'm Ralph Shaheen. When you say the word Knoxville to the average person on the street, most will think of Tennessee. Or if they're a sports fan, they'll recognize it as the home of the University of Tennessee's popular volunteers athletic teams. But when you say the word Knoxville to race fans, specifically sprint car racing fans, it is immediately recognized as the home of the world's most prestigious sprint car race, the Knoxville Nationals in Knoxville, Iowa. Let's start with C main action. Now keep your eye on pole sitter Cole Wood, who is slow to get up to speed. He makes contact with the 40H of Caleb Helms and triggers this huge multi-car crash, which collected Rico Abreu, Jason Myers, and Steve Kinzer, among others. Take a slower look and watch the path of Rico's 24 car as he sails over one wall and lands hard up against another. While this crash was scary, fortunately, no serious injuries were reported. In the B main, third place finisher Brad Sweet on the inside in the 49 makes contact with the 1B of Sheldon Hoddenshield, who takes this harrowing ride, flipping numerous times before coming to a stop. Even though his car was shortened on both ends, he climbed out to the cheers of the crowd. On to the main event, 25 cars set to do battle for 50 laps. What's on the line? How about 150 grand and a chance to put your name amongst the best in history? Seven time Knoxville Nationals winner Donnie Schatz led the field to the green flag and took the early lead over the number two of Shane Stewart. Stewart got high on lap 12, opening the door for the 21 of Brian Brown, who grabbed second and set his sights on the leader. Brown held second until a late race restart got him close enough to mount a serious run at Schatz. As they entered turn one, Brown went high as shots stayed low. That was just enough to give Brown the top spot as they entered turn three with six laps to go. Would the previous week's 360 Nationals champion be the man to dethrone Shots, who has won this race the three previous years? Not if Shots had anything to say about it. On lap 45, Shots continued to use the low groove and made this incredible pass on Brown to regain the lead. Brown gave it one more effort, this time trying the low side into turn one. But Donnie Schatz pulled away en route to his eighth career Knoxville Nationals victory and fourth in a row. Speed Sport World Challenge drivers Darren Pittman came home 14th, while Tim Kading finished 19th. Let's hear from the top finishers. You, when you race someone, the ability to have to change the way uh, you've been driving or all that stuff is what racing's all about. Uh, that's how races are won or lost. Um, you know, Brian was able to, to capitalize and, and get by me, and then uh, I was able to, to change things up and get back by him. So um, made it made it a little bit of fun. I'm sure uh, what well, probably wasn't the outcome a lot of people wanted, but uh, you know, it's our job to make sure we get STP and Victory Lane uh, on the 60th anniversary, and we did that. Had to go when I could. I kind of rode long enough there and um, made my move. And then once I made my move, I took his line, a corner, and thought, okay, that was pretty good. I just didn't want to go down there and miss it. And went back to the top and gave him another shot. But I tell you what, we at least we kept him honest. And we've had a great week. There's nothing to be ashamed of or nothing to be down for. We just uh, didn't get the job done. My guys gave me a car that could do it. I just didn't make some right decisions there late. But uh, that doesn't take away the, the great effort. Casey's General Store, FVP, Searsboro, Garrett Engines, Maxim Chassis. Just uh, want to thank all you fans, too. I know how much this would mean to you for me to beat him. And uh, I looked up about six to go and seen all you guys cheering. And uh, that was pretty cool. Very cool indeed. Brian Brown appears to be a force to be reckoned with for some time to come. Congratulations to him for having such a strong week and congratulations as well to Donnie Schatz for once again showing us all why he is the man at Knoxville. With the final word from the Nationals, let's check in with Speed Sport Magazine's Dave Argerbright, who is a part of the broadcast team for MAV-TV. On the face of it, the 54th FVP Knoxville Nationals look like another Donnie Schatz domination. If that's all you look at, the final results looks the same as eight of the last nine years. Schatz wins. However, Brian Brown made a charge at the end that brought this crowd to their feet, thrilling in anticipation, thinking somebody was going to finally push Schatz off the top of the podium. But in the true essence of sprint car racing, Schatz got back up on the wheel, drove back by Brown to claim his eighth title in the last nine years. 
Who's going to beat Donnie Schatz? More importantly, how can you beat this guy? Right about now, Brian Brown's got to be thinking that very same thing. However, we've got 365 days to think about it because one year from now, the 55th Knoxville Nationals will be on tap, and we're going to want to be here. With that, our program for tonight is just about wrapped up. But don't forget to tune in next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for Speed Sport from the Sacramento Mile, where the AMA Pro Flat Trackers were in action. Our next Speed Sport magazine show will air Thursday, September 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And for those of you Steve Kinzer fans that tuned in tonight to see his interview, we apologize for not showing you that tonight, but we will have his interview in its entirety in our next episode, I promise. Thank you for watching our show this evening. I would also like to thank our guests, Jason Myers, Brad Doty, Aaron Evernham, and Brian Carter for joining us. Have a great weekend, everybody. We hope to see you out at the races, and we'll see you here next Thursday at 8 p.m. for Speed Sport. Promotional fee and consideration paid by Altair Watches. For more on the John Force endorsed Altair Force, go to AltairTime.com.